Hello, this is Professor BRB, and today we will learn how to put a colored fill uh, on a text frame so that it can be placed over a photograph and have the type still be readable. This is going to be a very special text frame. It's going to have a feathered edge, and the way that we're going to construct it, you will see that if I move it, to say a lighter area of the photo, as I have done here, that it responds to whatever background it's placed over. So you can see there it was lighter and here it's darker. Wow, how did we do that? Well, let's get started. I'm going to go to an earlier version of the file and um, here you notice that I have several versions of the typography here that I've given myself to choose from. Um, I've decided this one is too frilly. Uh, this uh, is American Unchill. It's a beautiful typeface. You see it in Ireland all the time. But I think it's not so readable for the text, so I'm going to eliminate that. Uh, this one is quite nice. It's got the American Unchill at the top and Gil Sands. Uh, I like that, uh, but I'm, it's not what I'm going to choose right now. Uh, I'm going to choose this one, which has a nice heavy uh, typeface here. It's Baskerville bold. It looks good. It's readable, and it goes very well with my um, decorative uh, title here. So let's get started. Um, first thing that I need to do is put a little bit of padding around the edges of my text frame. And to do that, I must select it with the selection tool and go to Object Text Frame Options. Make sure you have Preview checked here. And in order to uh, get it to align vertically, I go to Vertical Justification center. That helped. And then I, w I don't want the type to be right near the edge of the frame. So I'm going to do a little bit of inset spacing here. And notice that goofed up my uh, line breaks here. So I might have to make some adjustments. Excellent. That looks great. So uh, still, I think that the underneath photograph is interfering too much with this, and I want to add a fill to my frame. So um, I'd like to use a color that's really in harmony with my photo, and I don't have anything like that in my swatches panel. So I'm going to use the wonderful new color theme tool. I love this new tool. If I choose this and I mouse over the whole photograph, you'll notice that the edge of the photograph lights up in blue. And if I just click, what I get is a palette of colors, of five colors, selected from the entire photo. And if I click here, I can choose various versions of this color palette. Right here I'm going to go with dark, add that to my swatches panel, you'll see it's right there, and uh, maybe I'll also do a muted version just because I might want to use that. With the color theme tool I can also sample a specific area of the photo by clicking and dragging, and it will create a color theme and I also have these choices just from that area of the photo. So in very short order, I have a beautiful set of colors that are going to automatically harmonize with this photo. So choosing my text frame here, I'm going to give it a colored background. So right, that is there. Uh, let's choose a nice dark color, like perhaps that dark green, or even this, eh, that's gray. Let's, let's go with the dark green. Um, that, that looks pretty good to me. Uh, but I'm not 
not happy with this because it looks too harsh. Uh, I want to make it a little bit more subtle. And here's where we can use effects. And first I have to select it with my black arrow and then effects. Transparency. Now I only want to affect the transparency of the fill. If I leave this on object, it'll affect the transparency of the type as well, and that is not what I want. I have to look at this and notice I have all these choices, the text, the fill, and the stroke. Object gets everything. I choose fill. Now I can reduce the opacity of the fill without reducing the opacity of the text, which is kind of cool. But I'm still not happy with how this looks, so I'm going to change the blending mode to multiply. And that's what causes uh, the frame to respond to the background uh, in such a great way, because multiply, for those of you who are familiar with Photoshop, makes uh, anything that you set on the multiply blending mode uh, responds to whatever is underneath it. So that's quite cool. Okay, take a look at this. That looks great, actually. And you'll notice it has the quality I mentioned before, that if I put it over a different background, it automatically responds to that background because it's set on multiply. That's great. Uh, and now I want to feather the edges. So back to effects basic feather here, turned on basic feather, and I can control the number of pixels, and I'm going to give it a rounded corner here. Click OK. Bingo! Done and done. So I think this looks really very cool. Um, I'm going to show you another example of the same principle in um, something done by one of my students with her very beautiful photographs. Thank you, Angela, for giving me permission to use this. Uh, her photograph is very dark, which means that it actually looks pretty good with the type over it. But we can make it look even better by putting a little bit of a frame uh, let me go to view display performance, uh, high quality display here to sharpen that up. Uh, and you can see if we zoom in on this, how the multiply background is interacting with the photo in a way that lets us look at the photo and the background. Uh, and it all goes together very well. I use the same techniques on this, uh, that if you look in my swatches panel, I have color themes that I pulled directly out of the photo. And uh, as I said, if we look at the original, uh, this is just the type laid on top of the photo. And this is the type with a little bit of a background. And I personally feel it is more readable this way. And uh, just to add a note here, uh, for the, the subtle color that we put on the type here, we used also colors from the color themes that were pulled directly out of the photo. And that is just a great way to create harmony in any kind of a uh, type over photo arrangement you should wish to make. Always just be aware that if you're putting type over a background that a lower contrast background is better. Like right up here you can kind of see that the background, because it has such a sharp difference between black and white, or light and dark rather, is, is making it harder to read that. And if we pull it down to the dark area of the photo, much, much better. So always uh, proceed with caution when you want to put uh, type over a photograph. You should be very careful to choose a, a, a uh, 
low contrast area of the photo and of course never put the type over something that would be the uh, center of attention. Like for example in this picture I think this church is the center of attention so I would never ever put the type over that. I would always put it on a less shall we say narrative part of the picture. I would always try and choose something more, more low contrast. So this is a fun, uh, a fun technique and I hope you will find a use for it on one of your projects.